Did you see our fantastic friend, uh, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow, ranking member of the Health Subcommittee uh, of the Senate Finance Committee, questioning the CEOs of the seven leading pharma companies regarding oh. high prices. She tweeted, American taxpayers have contributed more than $200 billion for Big Pharma to develop new medication. What do we get in return? The highest drug prices in the world, as I said just now in the Senate Finance Committee. That is outrageous. She joins us now. Senator Stabenow, it's been too long. Hello. Hey. Stephanie, how are you? It's so good to hear your voice. You too. You're too busy out there fighting the good fight for us every day. We, we are all fighting. It's all hands on deck. And I've got to tell you, when it comes to the cost of medicine, it's, it's really outrageous what's happening. Well, and you made a great point, both in the, in the uh, hearing and in your tweet, that, that they get a lot of taxpayer money to develop new medicines. And you, I think you pointed out the seven... Uh, companies testifying spent uh, almost eighty billion on selling, marketing, and administrative uh, expenses right. last year. Twenty-two billion more than what they spent on research and development. Um, exactly. Those, and by the yeah. way, let me just say that you and I and everyone listening pays for almost all of the basic research done that's through National Institute of Health. In fact, um, from two thousand ten to two thousand sixteen, there were over two hundred and ten new drugs, and every single one of those got taxpayer money to be developed. And if you can imagine, American taxpayers contributed more than $200 billion in grants to do that research uh, to the companies, not loans, but grants. And I actually think that's an appropriate role for government because basic research has a lot of risk. You don't know, you know, what, whether you're going to find anything. Uh, but then we give them that. We give them the information, and then they develop drugs from there, and we let them write the costs off, their taxes, so we subsidize them again. Yeah. And I just think when it's all done, since we help them create the medicine, we ought to be able to afford it. Yeah. Well, and you also made a good point. The Republican tax bill also gave Big Pharma a huge tax cut, uh, but they, they're still not lowering uh, drug prices right. for, for ordinary families. Right. And the seven right. CEOs who testified made over $100 million in compensation in 2017 alone. Exactly. And in fact, the seven companies in front of us took money from that tax cut, and to, uh, combined together, they did 69 billion on dividends and stock buybacks. So when you do a stock buyback, you raise the price of the stock so the CEO gets more money, the investors get more money. They didn't take that $69 billion and put it in to lowering the cost of insulin or the arthritis drug yeah. or anything, cancer drugs or anything else. They used it to enrich their own pockets by raising the value of their own stock. Senator, I read tweets like this every day. You mentioned insulin. Uh, Matt just tweeted, while I was waiting for my son's prescription to be filled yesterday, I witnessed three separate people leave without theirs because they couldn't afford the copay. They had insurance, but their prescribed meds were still unaffordable. It should not happen in the richest country. Jason said, I've traveled all over this country, and Americans are clear. They love finishing up their 14-hour shifts in the Amazon warehouse by driving until sunrise for Uber. Also, they can afford a single vial of insulin. Right. Um, right. In the richest country in the world, right? I mean, it's right. y you made this best but simplest point, I think, in the hearing. You said Big Pharma charges what they do because they can. That's the problem. No other country allows this. And so even though the, they are, like Humira is sold in Europe for much, much less, um, I forget exactly, but it's like, you know, it's, it's much, much less than it is in the United States. Right. I said, do you make a profit? Well, yeah, they still make a profit over there, but they're not allowed to make as much profit as they are over here. So what they do is they will sell around the world under these different rules that cap what they can charge the citizens of those countries, and then they make it all up by charging us who have helped create the drug through our taxpayer dollars. They're charging us whatever they want because they can and what has happened and you know i don't blame people for being tired of having this talked about so much like why can't get this get fixed here's the problem is that there are more drug company lobbyists than any other group of lobbyists yeah. in dc there's almost 1500 wow. registered lobbyists now think about that there are 100 senators that's 15 per senator and they are spending tens of millions of dollars with one goal, 
keep competition down so prices can be up. And so, right. it, it, you know, that's why the only way to do this is we, you know, we've got to have colleagues, in this case, Republican colleagues, to join us to stand up and say, no, yeah. no, well, no. Senator, you, I, I mean, once again, <laughs> I'll try to be senatorial. Um, <laughs> Trump talks a lot about this. You don't have to be senatorial. <laughs> <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> My job's to go low. Um, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, look, first of all, you know, Trump and Republicans accuse us of not, you know, working on any issues that we're just trying to take the president down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, first of all, two thirds of Americans think he's a criminal, according to the latest polling that, you know, yeah. Mueller and the obviously those committees will, will do the oversight that they are constitutionally bound to do. But people like you are doing the work on behalf of the American people. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. Once again, this is one of these things Trump keeps bragging about and talking about, and he's going to bring drug prices down. And meanwhile, you have three bills, the Know the Lowest yeah. Price Act, yeah. the uh, Empowering Medicare Seniors to Negotiate Drug Prices, and Affordable and Safe Prescription Drug Importation Act. Tell us specifically yeah. what those three yeah. pieces of legislation are. Well, the good news, interestingly, is that at the end of the year, the Know the Lowest Price Act, I actually got signed into law, and it was very interesting. <clears throat> and it's a one small piece, but very, very important piece, and that is when the, the gentleman who just, uh, that, that you just read uh, his um, quote from talked about watching people go to the counter and having to leave the medicine right. on the counter because they couldn't afford the copay. There's a question that every one of us should be asking, and that is, if I paid another way, if I paid in cash, could I get it for less? We found out last year that almost one out of four times when you go to the pharmacy, you're paying too much because you I, and this it's hard to even believe this would be true, right. but your copay actually may be more than if you paid out of pocket. And yeah. So it used to be that because of the, you know, the pharmacy may have per discounts or whatever other things going on. So you may, it may be a hundred dollar copay, but you could get it for twenty dollars if you ask and said, you know, what what would it be if I paid cash? And so pharmacists are watching all this going on, right? And we're barred, but their contracts with the drug companies and, and the whole system, right? had bans in them so they couldn't say to somebody hey by the way you know if you paid cash you could pay five dollars or twenty dollars they wow. were banned so i put in a bill saying you have to stop these gag clauses and what was interesting is every company said oh we don't do that they do it we don't do it they do it and i said well great if nobody does it let's just pass it and we passed it very quickly uh -huh. and yeah. actually got it signed into law so Good now for you. the now the pharmacist can tell you, and but I still would encourage people to ask the question. Right. The larger issues are having Medicare negotiate best price. Veterans Administration negotiates on behalf of veterans. They don't pay less price. They pay about 40% less on behalf of a very large group of folks called our veterans. Medicare needs to be using the clout of all of the Medicare beneficiaries to bring down the price. That's what they do in other countries. That's, you know, they're negotiating. Yep. The government is negotiating a best price. And instead, in this country, and they admitted it in the hearing, is that yeah. if you, you may actually, if you are a low-income person, be paying the highest price because you don't have insurance, you don't have anybody negotiating for you. So how... how how warped is this system yeah. where the only people that may pay list price are the people with no insurance? It's, it yep. really yeah. is no, listen, a, you're, an outrage. You're talking to someone with a 96-year-old uh, Republican Trump voting Fox News watching mom uh, <laughs> who, just broke yeah. her, who just broke her hip, and I'm going uh, in a week or so to take care of her. And I'm telling you, uh, it, it is it, this, I mean, but it's an issue that almost everybody confronts is the price of prescription drugs. Uh, and it, it, it's right. Yeah. And what happens is. And she's on Medicare, very, obviously. Yeah. Yep. And it's a very complicated system. They do a list price and then drug companies say, but no, we give a discount. And then they, there's all this complicated stuff about rebates and who gets the rebates and all this stuff that, that 
really just keeps moving the ball. You know, it just keeps changing where the ball goes, but prices never go down. Yeah. And so my concern is, even though the administration now is talking about lowering prices, which is yeah. great, I'd love to see them do, but we just, a lot of this is just moving the ball around. And what I look at is that the president appoints the former head of Eli Lilly. So right. Eli Lilly yes. as the head of Health and Human Services. It, it's, and it, there's a coal the lobbyist one. running the EPA. Yes. It, it just literally right, is right. some horrible parallel universe. Right. Where, and then right. we're supposed to believe they're really going to bring down the prices of drugs. Now, God love them. I hope they do. Yeah. I'm all for it. But if it's just more PR and, you know, uh, press releases that yeah. don't actually result in people's I know. medicine going down. Senator, that's why I'm a true liberal, because even though my mom voted for Trump, I want you to help her. Yeah, I, help I want her you too. to help her lower her drug prices because I love her I and she's my mom. I want to help her because, you know, <laughs> this is medicine. Exactly. And, um, yeah. Tell us, and, and finally, because I know you, you got to uh, run here, but the Affordable and uh, Safe Prescription Drug Importation Act, tell us what yeah. that is. This is simply saying if, you know, uh, if an, a drug is... FDA approved and, you know, developed in this country or some other country, but FDA approved and is sold in the United States and sold somewhere else. Uh, the example for us in Michigan is right across the bridge in Canada, um, that as long as it's safe, meets all the protocols, FDA approved, that people should be able, or a pharmacy or a hospital or others should be able to do business with those across the border and be able to get the lower Price. Now, here's the interesting thing. When the new uh, head secretary of HHS was sworn in, and Eli Lilly has been opposed to this, but there's Eli Lilly Canada and there's Eli Lilly U.S. And I ask, are you saying that the insulin sold by Eli Lilly Canada is not safe? Because their argument is you can't do reimportation because what's sold in other countries may not be safe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, so which, of course, we want it to be safe. Of course, there has to be standards. Right. But if it's approved by FDA and meets all the safety standards, people should be able to benefit from the lowest price. Yep, absolutely. We um, at the Stephanie Miller Show, Senator, are working with uh, Citizens for Truth and Drug Pricing. So it, just know that a lot of us got your back. A lot of great people, right. organizations are, uh, right. I mean, they have their lobbyists and all that stuff. But we've got you, man. We've got a secret weapon. Well, I, I appreciate everything you're doing. I think the bottom line is no more excuses. Yep. Yep. No more just moving the P around between the, you know, this, it, this is yeah. just, you know, no more excuses. I, listen, I just had to, you know, went to a fundraiser for a friend whose cancer is back. And, it, you know, it is just such a, 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 a crime, honestly, that so many people we know, friends, family, have to do GoFundMes to be able I to know. afford their medicine or their treatments in the no, United no, States of America. It's disgusting. And I have to tell you, um, just a couple of quick things. Insulin was invented 100 years ago, well off patent. Yeah. And, and, and yet they keep finding ways to um, you know, raise the price on it. And naloxone, which is used to, in, in a drug overdose, opioid overdose, yeah. was selling for $1 a vial in 2004. Then we had the opioid epidemic, and they came up with other ways to package it and distribute it and so on to get new patents and raise the price. Yeah. You know, at one point it was $4,000 oh. or something yeah. that was a dollar. Oh, wow. It's gone up to 2008. Brand name drums gone up 208 percent from 2008 to 2016. I mean, it's right. just yeah. No, this is. I mean, you no. Know, there's you know, and they have a hundred excuses and the hundred. You know, uh, Humira, which is an arthritis drug, has 136 different patents on it, um, and, and it's not related to the chemical formula that created. The, the medicine, the medicine is important. It's all the other stuff they do right. on manufacturing or packaging or other things where right. they can keep it under patent so they can stop competition. Yep. Um, Senator, you have to go uh, save America. I just have to roll, uh, to, uh, lint roll dog hair off my baseball hat, so I'm going to let you go. Great to talk to you always. You do such a great job. Thank Aww. you, Senator. You too. And we always appreciate your work for uh, the great state of Michigan and for the for America. So thanks right. so much. All right. Take care. All right. There she goes, Senator Yay. Debbie Stabenow. She's kind of awesome.